Greeting, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining Mother and Refuge of the End Times. How can we change the world? It seems like a moot question sometimes when we feel so small and the evils of this world seem so big. And yet, the power of one can have an enormous impact in the spiritual realm. How much more then can the power of many? What I'm referring to is the power and value of personal sacrifice. A topic that is barely given a nod during Lent with the removal of sweets to appease our conscience and our waistlines. But really, what if fasting and sacrifice could really change the world? Well, it can. And who better than Sister Lucia dos Santos, one of the three little shepherds of Fatima, to give us heaven's tips as to how to do it for the most impact. This is what Joseph Pernichin brilliantly shares in his blog for the National Catholic Register, published on April 7, 2023. And it reads like this. Sister Lucia and Our Lady of Fatima explained fasting and sacrifice. Fatima visionary Sister Lucia explains how our Christian tradition of asceticism can help us grow in love of God and neighbor. We would do well on Good Friday and Holy Saturday to consider what Sister Lucia of Fatima has said about fasting and sacrifice. She has a way of making palatable what some think unpalatable, so let's begin with a little foundation, then look at some clear and simple suggestions. Sister Lucia starts by reminding us that we must offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. This emphasizes a message of Our Lady of Fatima that tends to be passed over the request for sacrifice. In her book, Calls from the Message of Fatima, Sister Lucia explains that Our Lady wants us to, quote, make of everything you can a sacrifice and offer it to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplication for the conversion of sinners. Recall that Our Lady told the children, make sacrifices for sinners and say often, especially while making a sacrifice, O oh, Jesus, this is for love of Thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Lucia lays this foundation, then she gets into some specifics. She reminds us that the sacrifices can be physical, spiritual, material, intellectual, or moral undertakings. We've got to be ready to take advantage of the opportunities we see before us. We should be particularly ready to make sacrifices, quote, when this is required of us in order to fulfill our duty to God, to our neighbor, and to ourselves. This counsel comes from her second memoir in which she tells Bishop Jose Alves Correa da Silva, the good Lord himself bitterly and painfully complains about the extremely limited number of souls in grace who are willing to resign themselves to what is required of them in observance of his law. Think how much that has deteriorated in today's times. Sister Lucia explains, quote, Many persons feeling that the word penance implies great austerities and not feeling that they have the strength for great sacrifices become discouraged and continue a life of lukewarmness and sin. Then she says our Lord told her, the sacrifice that all people have to impose upon themselves is to lead a life of righteousness in the observance of his law. Because many judge the meaning of the word penance in great austerity, they do not feel the strength and pleasure to do it and are discouraged in a life of weakness and sin. The sacrifice required of every person is the fulfillment of his duties in life and the observance of my law. This is the penance that I now seek and require. Think about that. We all have duties in life, and we all have to observe God's laws. How about when we do our duties complaining or with a face long enough for our chin to touch our toes? Lucia points out that one of our sacrifices will sometimes be, quote, the cross of our daily work. Maybe at times it's repetitious and monotonous. In that case, we can remind ourselves that St. Joseph had to plane wood over and over for years. And think how many meals Our Lady cooked for the Holy Family and with no modern conveniences like an electric stove or even running water in the house, she had to haul it from the well. 
Would we think they complained even a single time? Lucia's guidance. These difficulties, quote, we must accept with serenity, patience, and resignation. Forget fidgeting and impatience when we're caught waiting in a long line in the supermarket, post office, or traffic. Offer it up in the spirit of sacrifice. Do it a few times and it will start coming naturally. Offer that grace towards reparation for sins or to help someone struggling with sin. Our Lady knows perfectly well where and how to use that sacrifice. During a conversation, Lucia reminded a questioner, quote, By sacrifice, Our Lady said that she meant the faithful fulfillment of one's daily duty. Lucia added that the rosary was important, quote, because we must pray if we are to be able to fulfill our daily duty. How big must our sacrifices be? To counter any wrong notion about the size of the sacrifices, Lucia explains, The fact that they are small in themselves does not make them any less pleasing to God, and also very meritorious and advantageous to us, because by means of them, we prove the delicacy of our fidelity and our love for God and for our neighbor. Making such little sacrifices enriches us with grace, strengthens us in faith and charity, ennobles us before God and our neighbor, and frees us from the temptation to egoism, covetousness, envy, and self-indulgence. Sister Lucia echoes the doctor of the church, St. Therese of Lisieux, and teaches a master's course in sacrifice that anybody and everybody can follow and succeed. St. Therese says that little sacrifices, the tiniest ones that seem even insignificant, have a great impact. She said, quote, I prefer the monotony of obscure sacrifice to all ecstasies. To pick up a pin for love can convert a soul. Sister Lucia also stresses that sacrifice is all the more necessary so we may avoid transgressing God's commandments to avoid sin. Renouncing anything that might cause us to sin is the way to salvation, she says. Where to begin? Lucia writes about several things on which to concentrate. Prayer, temperance, modesty, and charity. Prayer. Pray with faith and attention. Avoid distraction as much as possible. We're speaking to God, so pray with confidence and love. Why? Quote, because we are all in the presence of someone who we know loves us and wants to help us. Like a father who takes his small son's hand in order to help him to walk. In God's eyes, we are always small, fragile children who are weak in the practice of virtue, who are constantly tripping and falling, which is why we need our Father to give us his hand to help keep us on our feet and walking in the ways of holiness. This can mean sacrificing a little of our time for relaxation, Lucia said. Maybe get up a little earlier in the morning to attend Mass daily or an extra couple of days. Turn off the TV or radio and pray the rosary. Or set aside another time to pray the rosary. And don't forget to begin every morning with a traditional morning offering, because through it we offer to God all we do and endure throughout the day. Food and Drink Lucia counsels us to, quote, offer to God the sacrifice of some little act of self-denial in the matter of food, but not to the extent of impairing the physical strength we need in order to do our work. Moderation is the answer. Lucia gives some starters. Pick a fruit, dessert, or drink that we may not particularly like instead of our regular top picks. Put up with thirst for a little while longer before taking a drink. Avoid drinking to excess or abstain from alcohol. At a meal, don't take the best parts, leave them for others. So we don't become Pharisees blowing our own horn, Lucia cautions in these cases. Quote, but if we cannot avoid doing so without drawing attention to ourselves, take it with simplicity and without scruple, thanking God for spoiling us. God created good things for his children and likes to see us making use of them without abusing them and then fulfilling our duty of working to deserve them. 
and making use of them with gratitude and love for the one who heaps gifts upon us. Clothing. Lucia begins with an unexpected take on sacrifice in terms of clothing, which she said we not only can, but must make. Put up with a little heat or cold without complaining. If other people are in the room with us, let them open or close windows and doors as they prefer. Dress modestly and decently. Don't become a slave to the latest fashions. Refrain from fashions that don't align with or agree with the virtues of modesty and decency. This is very important, Lucia explains, quote, so that we ourselves may not be by our way of dressing a cause of sin for others, bearing in mind that we are responsible for the sins that others commit because of us. In order to avoid these temptations, we must be ever cautious about what we see on television and movies, in ads and magazines. Remember, when Jacinta was sick in Lisbon, it was revealed to her, quote, fashions will much offend our Lord. People who serve God should not follow the fashions. The church has no fashions. Our Lord is always the same. Lucia again cautioned, we must dress in accordance with Christian morals, personal dignity, and solidarity with others, offering to God the sacrifice of exaggerated vanity. She suggests doing away with loads of jewelry and using the money as alms to help those in need. We can opt for simple, less costly clothes over expensive ones. Behavior. Don't complain. Put up with little annoyances on our daily path. Maybe it's an unpleasant word to us, or irritating or disagreeable. Or maybe it's being passed over, ignored, forgotten, or rejected. No matter what it is, says Lucia, just drop it. Offer to God as a sacrifice. We must let these things pass, quote, as if we were blind, deaf, and dumb, so that we may in fact see better, speak with greater certainty, and hear the voice of God. Let others, quote, seem to have their way, Lucia says. Seem because in reality, the one who prevails is the one who knows how to keep silent for the love of God. Cheerfully let others occupy the first places. Let them enjoy and take credit for the fruit of our labors, of our sacrifices, of things that have been taken from us. Lucia even prompts us to go a step further. She encourages us to, quote, endure with a good grace the company of those we do not like or whom we find disagreeable, of those who go against us, upset us, and torment us with indiscreet or even unkind questions. How should we react to these people? Quote, let us repay them with a smile, a little kind deed done for them, a favor forgiving and loving, with our eyes fixed on God. Lucia taught. This denial of ourselves is often the most difficult for our human nature, but it is also the one most pleasing to God and meritorious for ourselves. Which brings us again to prayer to God, where we gain the grace and strength needed to make the sacrifices required of us in our daily lives. In doing so, we fulfill the Fatima request to make of everything you can a sacrifice and offer it to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplication for the conversion of sinners. As we offer these things day by day, notice how our sacrifices lead to blessings for us too. Gluttony gives way to moderation and temperance. We advance in modesty, patience, perseverance, humility, endurance, hope, and charity. The virtues grow, and we grow closer to God, with whom we will be happy forever in the next life. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. <laughs>